Hey, Gwen, how you doing? I'm doing fine. Good, good. Corey's actually going to be a couple minutes late. He's still in a um, in a um, meeting in Hollywood. It's some kind of um, I forget what he calls it, but um, uh -huh. with his publicist. So he's going. He said he'd be about ten fifteen. Carl minutes. Lane. Hey, Carl. Good evening, buddy. How you doing? I'm doing well. Yourself? Wonderful. I'm doing good. good. I'm good. I'm gonna go hey, ahead and start uh, six now. Go ahead. Listen, Carl. I'll make sure get your um your notes, pad, and any questions. Corey's gonna be about ten or fifteen minutes behind schedule, so realistically, uh, seven forty-five. I know we said seven thirty, but uh, about ten or fifteen minutes. I'm I'm just here to let everyone know uh, what the status is. So if you want to put your phone on mute, cool. But that's that's where we are right now. Okay, that's fine. I'm gonna go ahead and start six out, but. Um, I got I'm, I'm ready to write notes. Thank you. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Bye. Everybody else's day going pretty good. Unfortunately, sometimes, especially when they're inexperienced, they get someplace they really don't want to be. Oh boy, you act not to be in the head. It's good. The beginning of the time is the most toxic snake on earth. One month. Good evening, good evening. Who just joined us? Good evening, Diane. Not a Jessica Bill. Oh, you got back. Okay, okay. How was your day, Diane? Oh, I had a great day. Real pleasant. Thank you. How about you, sir? Good, it's good, it's good. I didn't touch yeah. down till about four or five o'clock this morning, but it was good. Oh, okay. Well, Mary, are you doing reading okay? my book? Oh, okay. Uh, just real quick, uh, did any of my brothers show up, uh, Brother John Me and Brother Trini, are y'all on the call? I guess not. Hey, feel free to use that message, Amir, that um, I sent out. Uh, you should get second here, um, just in case some, some folks uh, forget the number or can't quite navigate through the text message. I just sent you a message you should receive uh, that was a part of the um, group with Diane. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, what I'm trying to uh, do is uh, I only brought them two on. And okay. then uh, once they get the information, they can go ahead and. Good evening. Who just joined us? Sydney. Sydney White. Hey, good evening. Good evening. Just mm -hmm. want to let everyone know that uh, Corey's running about 10 or 15 minutes late, so realistically we should uh, get started right at uh, 745. I know it's 730 right now. We said 730, but he's, uh, his appointment's running a little late. And be about 10, 15 minutes. Islam. Islam. Sadiq, how you doing, brother? Fred Hillary, Antioch, California. Hey, Fred, good evening, good evening. Everyone, um, if you don't mind putting your phone on star six, um, we're going to be about 10, maybe 15 minutes behind schedule, so realistically, we're not going to start until about 7.45. Uh, Mr. Smith is running just a little bit behind schedule with a previous engagement. So uh, you can just put your phone on, seven, uh, on star six to mute out any background noise, and 
uh, about uh, 10 to 15 minutes maximum, uh, we'll get started, hope, uh, not hopefully, but uh, we'll get started no later than 7.45. I'll be checking back in to let everyone know if, if we've got Mr. Smith on the line. I would, I would suggest that uh, anyone who, um, anyone who uh, has questions, please note them down. Make sure you got something to write with. Um, so we can yield the floor to Mr. Smith so we can just go ahead and flow with um, some of the top questions that are usually um, for most of the folks out there that are getting some issues corrected uh, on the reports. So I'll be checking back with you momentarily. Hello. Hello. We're here. They'll be getting Hi. started. I'm a little late. Oh yes, I. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I was checking to see if I was on. Hey, music out. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, those of you who are started in less than 10 minutes, uh, Mr. Smith is running behind schedule. But he has assured that we will start in about 10 minutes. For your patience, and please set me on star six or mute so we don't pick up any, any background noise. Thank you. This is Yara from New Jersey. If stars, we will get you in about. Uh, um, you're breaking up. I can't hear you. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, hi. Good evening. This is Charles. Uh, we're going to get. Please put your phone on star six. We're going to get started in about five minutes uh, or so. Just uh, waiting on Mr. Smith, who had, uh, who scheduled, who. Uh, Prior engagement went a little bit long, so we should be getting started in about five minutes. Please put your phone on star six so we don't have any background noise. And hopefully, uh, if you can hear my voice, uh, Ms. Lane, hit me back and let me know if this is a better position than before. Thank you.
Brother Rob. Good evening, Brother Rob. Please put your phone on star six. We should be getting started in about five minutes. Appreciate that. And if you have any questions, we will open the line once we get Mr. Smith to join us on the call. Thank you. Leon. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I am uh, grateful for everybody taking time out of their busy schedule tonight on Sunday to dial in to get some information. So it's kind of a double-edged sword. We only do things that uh, we're interested in and things that we want, so there is a selfish motive here, and I can appreciate that. Yeah, but still, I, I, I Charles Kimbrough, would like to... Um, say thanks for calling in uh, because the information that you're uh, going to hear and learn is going to be, um, if applied, it will be life-changing for you. So make sure you uh, do have uh, something to write with and some paper. Uh, and when we get going and open the lines up for questions, please don't be shy. But what I would ask is that um, – what I would like to ask is that um, we keep the questions to a minimum. And if we have any personal scenarios, let's minimize, let's, let's not even bring in the personal scenarios, and let's just keep the questions as general as possible that not only uh, benefit you, but they could be applicable to someone else in the community. Uh, and then if there are personal um, 
issues and scenarios, we could do that on all, do that offline. So if you guys would adhere to that, I'd be grateful. I'd be grateful for that. Uh, and so would the uh, so would your neighbor on this call. Of course. Miss Okay, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So, um, hey, Mr. Smith, I'm glad you made it. I was just kind of give, doing some house rules and, and, and suggesting that uh, we ask the questions uh, once we open it up, that we ask the questions to um, that would benefit not only the individual who asked, but also in the benefit those individuals in the community as well. And any personal or uh, private scenarios, personal scenarios, we can handle those on the offline or in one of the seminars. Is that okay? Sounds sounds like a plan to me. Okay, okay. I know you're a busy guy. Uh, I know uh, you have touched down in your energy center, so I know you're energized right now. Uh, but I do know that you've been running since you've been here. <laughs> I have. I have. <laughs> well, before I open it up, uh, is there anything any uh, any uh, thing new on the horizon? Anything that you've learned that uh, just kind of bubbling that you want to share, or or any words of encouragement before I I kind of share my part and 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 start asking the people for some of their response? No, nah, no, you know it's 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 so much information inside of my head. It just it, you know some of it comes to me be things that I've I've forgotten, like uh, some stuff I actually went you know, talked about today with some people, but um, so nothing in particular, you know, it depends on the questions that's posed to me. Mm -hmm. It'll trigger certain things that, you know, that'll help me recall, like, something that I may not even be thinking about, so, but I'll share as much information as possible. Um, anything pertaining to, to credit, I'm 100% sure that, you know, I could solve whatever problem anybody's facing. So Okay. Okay. Well good. good. I, I'm not very confident. Um and having listened to your book, I probably have listened to it over twelve times now. And I've read it four times already. So uh I, I'm just redundant because I know repetition is the mother of all learning. And uh you having the experience that you've had, uh the personal hands on experience is um, is is has has a tremendous value. Uh, I, I want to open it up real quick, man. Just on a couple of questions, um, you know, or in, in terms of the process, you know, a lot of folks have have reached out to me, and and just said, hey, Charles, okay, that was that was good. Um, I'm excited. I'm on board. Let's do this. What do I do first? You know, what are some of the first steps that you would recommend? Uh, so that people don't put the cart before the horse. That was seems to be the the consensus, the leading question. How would you address that? Right. You know, like I said before, the first step is trying to get an actual um, copy of your credit report mailed from the credit bureaus. Um, after you get their report, then you want to establish um, your your one primary address and try to remove any and all addresses that have been associated with you because that's going to help once you start the process of trying to repair um, your credit. Because if you can remove um, a lot of old addresses that may be attached to collections or charged off uh, credit card accounts, things of that nature, it, it helps you during the dispute process. So those are the two of the first things uh, that I recommend. From that point, like you know, like I told you, um, everybody will have access to um, complete instructions in, in, in regards to the affidavits and the different tactics that I use um, in terms of attacking certain things that I faced, um, from tax liens to to bankruptcy. Um, to charge off accounts. Um, people will have like step-by-step -step instructions on
Hello? Yes, Ron. Yeah. Corey, can Don't, you hear me? Yes, yeah, can you I can hear, hear me? You now. Oh, yeah, okay. I don't know what happened. Right. Yeah, that's, that's technology for you. And that's, uh, that, that, that is a violation of the, um, of the, uh, of, of my human rights. So that, <laughs> I need to get that clarified. I'm sorry, but go ahead, brother. You were saying this. The last I heard you say was the, um, removing of the address. You know, addresses, yes. Right. Because a lot of times, you know, it'll help you once you get into the dispute process because they, um, refer back to different addresses that you may have had an account um, that was charged off, but you made payments on that account when you resided at um, a particular address. So that's two of the first things that you want to do, get an actual copy of credit report from the bureaus, and then once you do that, remove all of the addresses, telephone numbers that don't pertain to you at this point in time. And then, like I was saying, you know, I'm, I'm working on um, being able to provide all of the affidavits and different techniques that I use when I clean up credit. And 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 those those documents would be um, one of the ones to get the addresses moved up, removed from the uh, profiles, or is there something right. different? Right. I'm right. You'll be able to use. Um, you have the um, affidavit. It's called an affidavit to remove okay. fraudulent address. Um, yes. And I just throw that word in there just so that they re will remove any addresses that that you had in the past that may be attached to charged off accounts or collection accounts. I see. I see. So and, and, so and that. And that was one of the reasons, I don't know how many people were on the last call, that's one of the reasons why I say it's very important to get a copy of your current report, um, get a copy of your uh, ID um, analytics report, your ICS report, and freeze them. You want to refree freeze those, um, you want to freeze those reports because that helps you during the dispute process. And, Corey, if you don't mind, what are, you said, a current, and I know that to be um, A-C-C-U-R-I-N-T, is that right? Right. So you could just Google that, that particular um, site. But the other letters that you called off, IDS, what, what, what were the letters again? IDA, which is ID Analytics. Okay, and is that just one, Google that? Yeah, you can Google Google that uh, okay. that as well, okay. and just you know kind of read read through it, and they'll give you instructions on how to uh, order your ID analytics report, consumer report, and then once you do that, then you can see what's on it and freeze it. You know, have them freeze it at, at that point. Okay. So ID analytic or IDA, uh, mm -hmm. the current, and what was the um, what was the, the other one? one is your ICS. And, and ICS what's that cons this ICS Consumer Report. Um, are you you gonna ask me? Because uh, it, it's an acronym for um, uh, the name of the company. It, it um, man. It, I can't think of it right now uh, off the top okay. of my head. And I don't want to, I don't want to um, give you the, you know, say give you the wrong thing. But if you type in ICS um, Consumer Report, it'll it'll take you to um, it'll take you to what what you need in order to get their report because it's it's so many different things that they use to connect all the dots. I mean, you you know. People also need to get a copy of what's called their retail equation report because it helps them. Um, what a retail equation report is, it's actually um, information pertaining to you anytime that you have ever 
return an item to Walmart or Target or Macy's, and they try to use their report to one, look at your buying patterns, two, they use it um, to identify um, neighborhoods, three, they use it in terms of um, driver's license information. So people need to get a copy of that as well and look at it and see what's on it. And also, the other one is called the work number, and the work number is actually owned by Equifax. And what the work number is, um, it's actually it's actually um, information um, when you work for a corporation. A lot of these corporations, like Federal Express, International Paper, any any large corporation or medium sized corporation, they report all your salary information to the work number, which is owned by Equifax. So a lot of times they know if you were to fill out a um, a credit app and you put down that you make sixty thousand when you really make thirty thousand, they kind of already know, you know, what you make if they have an agreement with the particular company that you work for, and you can also order that report and see what's on that report as well. So it's a it's a lot of different ways that they are um, putting compiling information on people to use against you. And it's just a matter of us connecting the dots and cutting them off, you know, at the path. Now, will a freeze prevent these um, other information landing on these other reports? Yeah. Or these in the, the freeze will a freeze will prevent the information landing on those reports. Right. Well, what will happen? You know, it will take some time to to fall, you know, to to, to fall into play. But you want to do that because that's what they reference back to. LexisNexis instant ID check. Um, that is that is like when you dispute through Equifax, Experian, or TransUnion, they say we verified it. Nine times out of ten, they verified it through your LexisNexis ID instant check, identity check report. That's what they verify it against. And so they're, you can so if they're you, saying if, they're saying verified but they're really not clarifying uh how and who. So yeah, the ignorant verif- would just say the ignorant would say, Oh, okay, he they verified it, so let me just tuck my tail and run because I didn't know to ask any questions. Right. Verified it just means like, okay, let's see if what it is and their records, and if you read, if you read the disclosure on the Lexis Nexus, the um, instant I, I um, instant ID check, it'll tell you that because it comes from third parties, a lot of the information can be incorrect, mm. but they are not governed by the Fair Credit Reporting Act. So there's nothing you can really do against them in terms of looking at them like they are a um, credit reporting agency. Mm-hmm. Same thing when you get a copy of your current report. It tells you we are not governed by the Fair Credit Reporting Act because we are not a consumer reporting agency. But the consumer reporting agencies use the information provided by these different entities yes so within their own system it could be a part of their bylaws to say that whatever we uh, uh, confirm or verify through Lexis Nexus or current we Equifax or we TransUnion uh, we consider that law or we consider that truth or uh, uh, good enough for us to um, uh, go back against the consumer. Right. It may that may be the case. You know. Yeah. Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure, but you got to always remember. Like I said, we are not their customers. We we are not. We 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 are yeah. we are their um. We are their what com- the the product that they the make product. money off of. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. 
Well, I could go on and on. I'm going to see how uh, I'm, I'm going to be faithful here, and uh, I'm going to open it up, and, and I'm just going to randomly pick a name out and uh, uh, let this individual have the first question. And then, folks, uh, you know, remind just, uh, I'm just reminding, you know, some common courtesy and etiquette here uh, to get your questions in. So uh, everybody uh, who has a question, this first person, leave everybody, leave your phones on star six for now. But uh, Brother Sadiq, if you're on the line, go ahead and hit star six and open up and answer your, uh, uh, ask the first question, and then we'll go from there. So Brother Sadiq, if you're online, uh, go ahead and hit uh, star six and unmute yourself and, and go ahead and ask uh, Brother Corey uh, first question, if you don't mind. Islam, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Islam. Yeah, I can. Okay. My question is, uh, with all these third-party entities, is the affidavit process the process we use to freeze the accounts with these other entities that the credit reports are using? Nah, you, you don't need an affidavit for that. You can just simply request that um, your report be frozen. Like, so you don't need the affidavit for that. The affidavit is used to kind of work against the privacy laws when you are disputing the information that they place on your consumer report with Equifax, Experian, or TransUnion. That's what the affidavits are mainly used for or when you're trying to get a response from the bankruptcy court or the tax lien office or um, for, child for support. Foreclosure? Okay. okay. Yeah, well, the, yeah, well, the foreclosure would be directed because it's not, uh, when it's placed on your credit, it's pay, placed on your credit um, by way of whoever your lender was. So it's not really like, um, you use the affidavit for it, but, you know, in terms of um, the public records, like the tax liens and bankruptcies, there's like a different affidavit for, for that. But, yeah, when you're using like the... Um, the general affidavit to dispute like the student loans, the foreclosures, collections, or charged off account, those affidavits are the same. Mm. Got it, got it, got it. Um, just real, uh, just want to interject while Brother Speaker had that question. Good question. Um, let's say, you know, the freeze. It's just something as simple as, um, putting it in writing in a regular letter format that says, please put a freeze on my account uh, and then put the name and the identification, you know, social security number, and should any inquiries, um, you know, present themselves, contact me, con make me the first contact at this number. Is, is that something safe to say would be uh, uh, along the lines of a freeze? Right. Well, once the file is frozen, nobody will have, access to it anyway. Like when you go to apply for credit, you have to have a PIN number where you have to call in and actually release your file. Mm. And, and so would that would broke, happen, what, like if I send, if I put, the, if I pin that letter, what I just said, please freeze my account uh, at this time. Sincerely, uh, best wishes, whatever, Charles. And I put my information. Would they then contact me back with a letter and giving me a pen or asking me to choose? Right. A pen? I mean, you could you could you could do it over the phone. Once once you get a copy of that credit report in your hand, um, coming directly from the credit bureau. I'm not even talking about ordering it offline with the um, free credit report. I mean, actually getting them to mail your report. Um, so you can actually you 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 can do a whole lot that way. You know. Mm. That's how I do the most damage when I get it to come directly from them and not through, you know, some online source. Uh, but when you do it over the phone, they'll you you will actually be able to uh, set up a pen. And then they'll mail you out a letter making sure that it was you that placed the freeze along with your pen number. That's one way. The other way is just putting writing in and placing a consumer statement on your credit file. And it, it'll just simply say, please do not extend credit, in, uh, you know, in my name unless you call such and such number. And that's a number that you place on your credit report. And that's another way that you can also protect your credit. Yes. 
Got it, got it. Brother Sadiq, did uh, did uh, he answer your question? Take you got me. Uh, yes, yes. Oh, oh, okay, wonderful, wonderful. Right. Uh, anybody, anybody else have a, a, a question they'd like to pose for Ms. Smith? Don't be shy. I Hi. Don't talk to you. Hi, this is this is Sharif. Can you, this is Sharif. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, I can hear you. Loud and clear. Okay. Uh, when I was I was growing up uh, in Detroit, and my parents used to, uh, uh, rather with the jewelry store, the appliance store, the furniture store, they would buy things, and they would get what's called uh, buying it on time, and it was through local business. My question is. How did uh, doing local business in your local neighborhood, how did all that end up on credit reports where everybody in the world can see it? Well, a lot of times when you do, um, when you establish credit through like a local business, one, they don't always have agreements with all three bureaus. Two, they might only have an agreement with like Equifax. Or they might have an agreement with TransUnion to report because they may need like 500 customers or 1,500 customers before um, Equifax or TransUnion or Experian will even allow them to to be able to report uh, someone's payment history. Um, so to answer your question, in order for that to happen, they have to have some type of agreement in place with one of the three major credit bureaus. Because I know, like, at one point I had I had so many rental properties, and I wanted to uh, be able to report, you know, um, for certain people, like, to, that they're paying on time, and I had to set up an agreement with Equifax. So I had to pay so much money per year, and I had to have so many um, clients. You know, so that's, if that answers your question, that's usually how that happens unless it becomes a public record and it'll end up on your credit if it goes in a bad direction, like you have um, some type of agreement with the local business and you don't pay them right, and then they decide to take you to court, and that becomes a public record it'll end up on your credit without them having some type of business agreement with the credit bureaus. Because well, you got to go ahead. I was going to ask you, what is the benefit to the business owner to pay money annually to be able to report um, its payment history uh, of its clients to the credit bureaus? What's the benefit for me as a business owner to do that with if Brother Sharif was one of my uh, customers. Why? Why? Why would that benefit you to pay the credit bureaus or pay? Yeah, pay the credit bureaus to report that information. Is there a asset, benefit to me? Asset and net worth. It's just so that like would be, that would yeah. that would put, that would be on my file then, as a business owner. Right. Just like the collection agencies, when they buy so much debt. If I if I buy a million dollars worth of debt, I just increase my net worth by a million dollars. That's how the banks look at it. That's how this looked at. So even for me to be able to report in a positive way, I got over 500 clients. I have 500 promissory notes that say these clients each owe me $10,000 a piece and they have 72 months to pay this $10,000 off. I just increased my net worth. Like those are receivables almost. So that would be the benefit. Mm. Okay. Well, quick follow up. Quick follow up question: uh, Is there any benefit or strategy to doing business with with small and local businesses that extend you credit, or or the focus in on the on the major corporations? Is there any strategy, strategies in, in terms of it helping you in a positive way? Yes. Yeah. If you if you if if they can report, yeah. If they can't report, then it it, it doesn't help you because you just making you just paying on time, but it's not it's not going to help you unless you just dealing with that particular business. 
is not like is not going to help you. It's just like you paying me on time for a car. I don't report to the credit bureau, so you're not going. You, you won't get a, a grade for it. So, nah, it doesn't. It doesn't benefit you. And I mean, and that's just my opinion because I'm like, what's the use? Okay, thank you very much. So that's a good point, Corey. So, so even though that's a good relationship in your community, you're not creating a digital footprint that's going to benefit you. And it doesn't even really benefit the business owner other than uh, um, he and I have a good relationship and he's getting his money on time and I'm getting, you know, I'm keeping my word. That, that seems to be uh, what, you just, what you described. Right. Got it, got it. So it's important um, to, in this, in this credit uh, arena, this, these conspiracies of credit, if you will, it is important to keep a positive footprint so that I mean, if you're going to be in the game, you might as well leave a mark. Is that right? Right. Right. Score some points. Say again? I said score some points. Right, right. I mean, that's the whole purpose. That's, that's, that's why I stress and, 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 and preach uh, learning how to leverage credit, you know, to be able to position yourself financially. Because at the end of the day, the whole objective is at some point to be able to remove yourself from the system where you're not dependent upon it, where, like, damn, I got to have credit if I want to buy a car. I got to have credit if I want to buy a house. I got to have credit if I want to invest in this. You know, you, yeah. you, you want to you try to position yourself from the standpoint of um, – like one, like one of the things that 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 uh, has been good for me is like really low cost uh, properties, whether it's in in one of these bad um, economic uh, bad economies like Detroit or Memphis or Birmingham or Jackson, Mississippi. You know, you can find properties for like. Thirty-eight hundred dollars or twenty-five hundred dollars, mm -hmm. but you can you can sell these same properties. I, I don't care if you're selling them for if you pay um, thirty-five hundred dollars for them, but you can resell them for fifteen thousand dollars or twelve thousand dollars. You know the pennies will add up eventually, even if you did that five times. You know five times times five thousand dollars. It's yeah. twenty five thousand, and and you haven't spent twenty five thousand, so it'll serve as like whatever debt that you created by using your credit. Yeah. Yeah. The the that's phenomenal. The the the, the percentages, uh, the percentages are what counts. You know, if you, you know, it's all about profit. It's all about profit. Does anybody else have any questions? Uh, Star six and and go ahead and. Hi, this is Jan from New Jersey. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing all right. I have a question. Um, uh, as I was listening, one of the first things you said is to order your credit report right straight from them, not get it online or anything. That's going to give you the biggest ammunition. But the next thing to do is to remove all fraudulent addresses. Can you explain the definition of fraudulent because I did live at those addresses? It's just wordplay. That's why I said you just – it's just wordplay. It's not – it's not something that you're going to get hauled off to jail for. You're basically saying, I didn't live at these addresses. And, you know, sometimes people might have more values, but you got to understand the war that you're fighting. Because okay. they're, they're not playing fair. So you could have lived at 3291 Echo Street in New Jersey, and you could have had a Citibank car when you were staying at that address and making payments on it but fell behind and they charge it off, and now you're trying to come back and dispute it, you know, saying, well, it's not mine or how, what, however you want to dispute it, but it's an address attached to that account. So if you remove the address first and then dispute it, okay, you can't, that's, 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 that's one bullet fired towards removing that negative account. 
It's just like right now, if you try to dispute a credit card that's that's positive on your credit report, but it's attached to an address, they're gonna tell you, well, uh, this particular account is being reported on from such and such address is listed on your report. So it's going to make it. It's going to make it difficult. But that's just that's just wordplay. Same thing they do with you. A lot of wordplay. You know, so, some people so that's in, in the moment right now, like if, if she doesn't live at that address, I mean, if she's not saying, she's not disputing that she didn't live at that address. She's just saying that I, that's a, that's, that, that address is incorrect because I, I know what you're saying, sister, when you look at the definition of fraud, you know, fraudulent, you know, it's, it's is that the law is, is interesting because it's, is it literally right now? Are we speaking of right now? Uh, and, and when you look at the number of definitions of a word, and so, um, Corey, with the wordplay, um, if she's not living at that address now, it's, it's, it's like on a need-to-know basis. If you don't need to know, it, it don't matter right now. I don't live there now. I'm not saying I didn't live there. I'm just saying that that address is incorrect right now. Right. And, and even if you don't, even if you don't want to use the word, you, you still can, can do an affidavit against that address to have them remove it. Mm -hmm. But I just, I always put that in there. It's almost like, you know, I mean, they're fraud from the get-go, you know, from off top. Like, so, you know, don't get caught up on the, the one particular word. It's just, it's all like a lot of wordplay. Like, if you read through a lot of their information, it's just wordplay. That's why they have, same thing if you read the Fair Credit Reporting Act, it's so congested because it was written by these attorneys and they play with a lot of words. You like, what the hell does this mean? Mm -hmm. And um, go ahead. Um, yeah, yeah, that's what you're saying. It's just wordplay. And we're just doing the same thing, wordplay. So I, I definitely get that. And I had one more question. Um, and I be real general with this. I went to buy a house, and when I went to buy a house, I had a bankruptcy, but it was an old one, so they took it off my report. So this is right. for other people out there who, when I went to go buy it, they still pulled up that old report. So it's like hidden. Is there hidden reports? Like I could pull it and not see it at all, but when you go to a mortgage company or you go to wherever you go, and that's the people out there saying, hey, they're supposed to take it off your report in seven to ten years. It's taking off. But guess what? When you go get a mortgage, you look back on there, and it's still on there. So is there reason why things are hidden behind? Or is it because they just checked the courthouse? Or Right. That, that's the reason why I said a lot of those other files, you got to freeze them. Because your current report, when you get a copy of it, mm -hmm. man, it's going to go back from the time mm -hmm. you was in high school up until uh, now. Uh, every address, like everything. That's why you gotta you gotta freeze all those little small reports that's not considered consumer reporting agencies because that's where they're getting a lot of the information from. That's okay. why people people could clean up their credit and remove they might have been evicted from an apartment. And they might mm -hmm. think, well yeah, I'm I'm good. But when you go to get an apartment, they using another resource that you can't see, but they can see like, oh, there was an eviction, <laughs> you know, so they can see that because you hadn't you hadn't taken the necessary steps to freeze certain information. Okay. So Corey, just like you said, and and this 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 just the this was a light bulb moment right here, and I'm sure it is for some of you all on the phone. We're not, we're, we're the product. So they're selling us around. It's like, you know, the story you told me about the, uh, the grocery store rewards club, you know, like here in California we have Safeway. So there are a lot of people right. that have a Safeway club card. You could get a dollar off gas, gap per gallon. You can get free sandwiches, all that, you know, stuff that bells and whistles that come with reward cards. These entities are using these other reporting agencies that don't 
fall or live under the guidelines of the credit of the consumer acts that protect us they're just another data collection center that's selling our stuff uh, openly and making money and we don't know about it exactly exactly you just said the key thing they are not governed by like they are not considered consumer reporting agencies so certain things they can get away with they're not governed by the fair credit reporting Act. they're not governed by the fair debt collections practice act so they're just gunslingers you know <laughs> ah man I hope this helps somebody. I, I really do. Now, no, no, since we're talking about those other agencies uh, and we mentioned uh, evictions and bankruptcies and so forth, um, I know student loans, you know, is a, a dark cloud over some. I know it is for me. Um, you know, foreclosures really touched. But what about, um, you know, the emphasis, somebody, uh, the, the judicial system, you know, the penal system, we've all been touched where it's either – a sibling uh, 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 or some relative or loved one who's been incarcerated, um, and they haven't, you know, been out doing any commerce in say five years, ten years, et cetera. How could you help them uh, get their information straightened out? Would it be the same process, or is there something different? Yeah, I mean, they're in the best position out of everybody. Cause they're like newborn babies. They 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 don't even exist on paper. So right off the bat, if they have a family member or a friend that has great payment history on a credit card. Hey, add me as an authorized user. I don't need the card. I don't need any of that. I just need their history. Mm -hmm. Or if it's a card, like if they do have a Macy's or a um, Bloomingdale's card or one of these retail cards that will allow you to add a joint card holder, ask them to do that. That's like a primary account. But by doing um, by doing that, it gives them an instant 700-plus credit score because when they're added to someone's uh, account that made, they made, you know, somebody's had an account for five years, they paid on five years no late, and they add someone as an authorized user, that person is going to get all of their great payment history, all of their history. Mm. So, bam, they they automatically got ha, um, have a, you know, a, a, a um, seven hundred plus credit score. And just like from that. that point, just like that, and from that point, they can you know, kind of like be strategic um, in terms of what they will apply for next. Mm -hmm. So, you want to maybe try to get one major credit card and, you know, some other prestigious credit card, and then from that point, hit the credit unions. Get in, get into the credit unions like um, NASA or Tinker or PenFed or Navy or USAA because those are the ones that's loaning money. You want to get in, you, you know, you want to, the, the credit bureaus are a lot less stringent than the banks are. They'll loan you know, got it. I have a so question. Better. This is Diane out of Jacksonville. How are you? Hey, how you doing? I'm great. This is a question about the privacy laws and that. I sat in a meeting at work where our um, company has an over a million customers announced that they were going to stop using third-party uh, debt collectors to report to the bureaus, that they would begin to report themselves in the near future. And I want to ask, what might be their motive for that? Okay, say again. It, it, my phone kind of went out. You, you, you said... My apologies. The company announced that they're not going to use third-party debt collectors to report to the agencies on delinquent accounts. They're going to start reporting themselves. So they're cutting out the, the collection agencies. The company itself is going to report to the bureaus. I'm just right. trying to figure out what would be their motive for that change. I mean, it may be something as simple as uh, 
they stand to at least get some of their money back. Okay. Uh, it could be anything is they they have chosen to be um, the servicing company on the debt as opposed to selling it, or they may have not. They may have just simply been hiring a third party um, debt collector as opposed to just selling like the whole account to them and having no more rights to it. So it could be a number of things. Um, you know, it just depends. I, I really wouldn't yeah. know unless I, I knew um, who the company was. Um, if it's a, um, a company that sells like medical debt, or which I know is probably it's not them because you would. If you find a hospital that reports to the credit bureaus directly now, let me know. Because most of them sell mm -hmm. the medical debt. Um, well, and, you know, I'll just have to know what company um, is doing that. Yeah, I just was wondering, just making sure they haven't hadn't changed any uh, privacy laws. Nah, the, the privacy okay. laws, mm -hmm. like, I, I can't see them, uh, I can't even see them on, um, change it unless they got, you know, we had some other traumatic um, event to happen in our country where they felt the need to uh, use that as an excuse to put more laws in place, you know, more okay. privacy laws in place. Okay, you actually answered my question because the company I work for, they hire debt collectors versus selling the debt, so you answer my question. Okay. Thank you. Hey, Corey, um, how about um, extending um, uh, extending our credit internationally? How, how is, is, the, is I, I'm sure, I know that's possible, but what, what would you say, what would you um, suggest would be something um, Simple when you and, say when you say extending your credit internationally, you mean personal? What do you mean? Well, your I know your personal credit has to be uh, you know pretty good in order to uh, show some assets so that your business. But uh, I'm speaking of in, in terms of doing business internationally. Uh, is there is there a formula or strategy to um, extend or to to create credit internationally from where that, we currently are. Yeah, I mean there is, but I, I mean I'll have to ask the question. Like, you know, if you get to a point where you're doing business on an international level, more than likely you've You, um, you, um, I'm sorry, I just, <laughs> I'm sorry, I just got distracted. Mm -hmm. um, somebody just sent me a text message about um, a, a bill. I, I go back in here and, and pay it. But um, um, <laughs> they, 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 they find you wherever you are. Huh? No, nah, they just texted me. It was like, because I, I was actually went to the, like, this is an event that I was invited to, and, and, and they were like, hey, this is such and such the, uh, <laughs> the waitress you didn't pay your friend's bill because i stepped out to do this call so that's why I, oh. I'm, it's, it's just completely <laughs> off subject but um okay. but anyway um uh, if you're doing business on an international level i was just i mean you at that point like you obviously have established your your business to the point where it damn near can stand on its own own and you you don't you don't need um something that's more valuable in the United States to conduct business overseas. And, and then a lot of countries, their credit system is is either non-existent or is not set up the same way that the United States system is set up. Like they may only, you know, for some countries, some countries do only have like Equifax that they use. But mm -hmm. it's a completely different um it's a completely different um, type of landscape um, that they use to report these people's information in other countries. So, I mean, if you're doing international business, like hopefully you have established yourself um, financially where you, you have the money to, to shake and move um, if you don't have the 
personal context to do what you need to do. Got it. So I, I mean, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, no, no, that that uh, that does. Well, I, you know, I, I know that um, I could sit here and ask you questions all day, man. Um, any other uh, closing questions? And and Corey, if you have anything you want to um, add, that would be great. Uh, hey, this, is, this is Carl. Yeah, go ahead. Anybody? Uh, yeah. Yeah, this is Paul from from uh, from Tampa. I have a question. I know last week we talked about. I think Charles, you mentioned uh, knowledge is power when it's applied, and then Corey, you stepped in and said that that it's powerful when it's a secret. When it's I think when it holds its most power is when it's a secret. Right. I, I agree. That was a great statement. I'm not sure if I said it right, but now that you have a following, your your book is out there. What do you want from us? You've created a distribution channel. We have this information. Are we to take it to our families uh, outside of, um, you know, buying the book? How do we take this? What's next? What's next for us? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean that's you my whole goal. You? Is that's my whole goal. I want people to uh, talk about the information as much as possible. Not even to uh, say, well, yeah, I wanna, I wanna um, sell my book. Uh, because even with the book, I got to sell a whole hell of a lot of books. I mean, I, I get checks mm -hmm. for them, but be, because I'm using their distribution system, they take 55% of the money, you know. So I don't, the bulk of my income even now is, is generated off different deals, whether it be like from real estate or me just finding other deals to, you know, try to, I've, you know, diversify my 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 money to the point where it's, it's it's keeping me afloat. But with saying all of that, my whole that's the whole thing. Like I can't change it with a book or two books or three books. There has to be a movement. There has to be a movement of people um, having enough information to to be like, man, this is this is what's going on. A lot of people do not know like what's going on. Like they they are um, almost in a state of comatose. You know, they, you got people that that you know. And I always talk about education. They got you have people that truly do not understand the whole purpose of creating this blueprint for the United States educational system. Like it was a blueprint designed to create workers to take away from people's creativity to have you use the right side of your brain like a machine and unless people do some real hard research or unless people um, have someone that can say something in the simplest way to be like ah you know that that makes sense Nothing is going to change. I mean, it's got to be a movement. Like, we could say, well, yeah, it takes one man, like, whether it be Martin Luther King, Louis Farrakhan, it takes, yeah, it, it, one man can lead, but he ain't. he's not going to be able to do it by himself. It's going to take a movement of people to be like, we get, we behind you. You know, so I'm saying, yeah, tell people, like, because it'll have them looking at things in, in a completely different light. It'll have them, like, you know, even with when I speak about school, it's like we're going to college. Like, man, at this point in the game, the person got to stand back and be like, man, what's going to be the return on my investment? Like, if I go to college and I get, I'm damn 30000 in debt when I get out, and I have a degree that I can't use, or I have a degree that, that man, they're not employing people, period. Like, that's not a good return on my investment, whether it be time that I put in or the money that I got to pay back, you know. So I, w I would rather spend my time not going to college and learning something that I'm going to make money on and not be in debt and 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 in the time that I spent 
trying to um, learn whatever that I'm whatever trade or trade or information I'm gonna use to bring me money. I'd rather be doing that. You know, so Well Corey, you just described the perfect math uh equation, you know, whose return uh, whose asset and liability uh, columns uh, is this falling under? You know, it, it doesn't make good sense, business sense for you to invest that time or money to go to college and knowing that you're going to come out in debt, but the universities and the system that we live in uh, sees it the opposite way. It's like uh, Robert Kiyosaki mentioned, you know, uh, uh, the, the misconception is people say my house is my biggest, uh, uh, biggest investment and it's in my asset. Well, most right. folks don't understand uh, the definition of assets and liabilities, and, and most people that have purchased homes are under that uh, misconception. Uh, but if they look at the definition, the home that they purchased and live in is a liability <coughs> to them because liabilities are things that cost you money and assets are things that make you money. So living in your own house that you per think you purchased, you spend hard-earned money and man hours, you really just went in the hole because that, that, that dwelling, that domicile, is not going to generate you one dime. But if you bought that house and you put a renter in it, and instead of paying the $1,000 mortgage, you now, you now collect $1,800. You're now, uh, 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 you're now uh, $800 in the black. So that is a, a better investment. So what you just described um, – is very important, and I know it's for another time and another class, but um, going through our system, just for somebody to say that they've got a BA, BS, a master's, or PhD, um, believe that they give, that gives them more credibility, allows people to look down on other people. Uh, if you stop and think, which most of us haven't done because we've been trained this way, just because you went further down the line or further up the ladder in this dogma, uh, dogmatic society teaching you what they want you to do, what, what the system wants you to do, which is be a consumer, machine right. that writes out of the brain. So I appreciate what you're doing, brother, I, and, 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 I, and just in our conversations and, and hearing what you just said again, um, piggybacking on your answer to Carl's question, we really need to start telling people right where we are in our community, uh, which leads me to uh, the uh, uh, closing piece on this is the seminar, webinar, uh, and getting a hold of the book. You know, everyone on this call knows that I personally am um, not here to sell books. Um, I'm not here, and, and Corey's not here to sell books either because it would take him an awful lot of books uh, to, you know, the, to sell, but he's, he's definitely going to cash the checks. We understand that. We all entrepreneurs have an entrepreneurial spirit. But to, to see things change individually, we all got introduced to hope. So each one of us on the phone has our own selfish motive of why we're here, whether it's to get something off our report, strengthen our report, get that business line of credit, you know, get that 20000 50000 100000 half a million dollar line of credit or, or leverage, I should call it, so that you can do what you want to do. That's why, most, that's why we're all here, you know, cutting the, uh, to the chase. We have a selfish motive. So since you can't do it by yourself, and no person can, uh, can, can grow or, or, or lead an army by themselves, it takes a team, you've been invited by somebody because they love, respect, and care for you to say, look, you need to be on the call because this brother's talking some real game here. You know, you want to get out of debt. You want to get that credit score increased. You want to get that $20,000 to start your business. You want that 100000 for your house or your, or, or your, or your new uh, food truck or whatever it is. We came here right. for that reason. Right. And so yeah. you're saying, Corey, as it gets started, start telling people uh, in, in, our, in our own communities. And then because of the invite and the relationship you and I built, you committed to helping me help them, and that in turn we would be able to do some deals together um, should uh, right. the opportunity arise, and uh, that um, you do have some other fast tracks to help people um, step up their scores, but you first want them to educate themselves and get an understanding yeah. rather than just being told what to do. Yeah. Uh, when I was in, you called me when I was in New Orleans on the, the 
group of people that I was down there with, uh, one of the ladies asked me about uh, why I don't go to church. <laughs> they asked me was I atheist. I was like, no. Like, I believe in God. You know, I believe in God and me. But I was just telling her, like, it would take uh, a hell of a preacher that was saying something that to, for me to be able to sit there and, 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 and listen to him. I said, you know, I always talk about selling hope. And I was like, man, you got to ask yourself the question, like, is this guy just selling me hope for the purpose of him improving his life? Or is he selling me information for the purpose of me improving my life? And a lot of times people will go to church for the purpose of getting an emotional high. And, 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 and it's hope to the point where because they don't truly understand who they are in God or in Christ, however you want to label it, they don't truly understand, like, like what's going on, like, why am I even here? You know, so my thing is I say read and educate yourself because I want to, I don't want to just sell you hope. I also want to sell you information that you can help your own own self because the more information you get, the more you'll be able to, you know, start connecting the dots. I, I talked to um, this guy named Randall Harrelson. I hope none of you guys know him, but he's like this credit expert that's like one of the top people for, I think it's Financial Institutes of America, whatever this organization is. He's supposed to be an expert, and I probably asked him three questions. I asked one of the questions was, um, do you know, uh, can you tell me, like, how should I respond to an affidavit of destroyed instrument from a collection agency? He didn't even know what the hell I was talking about. The other question was, um, so what do you think I should do once I get a, um, a hold of my accuring report? Like, how, how should I proceed? He had never even heard of an accuring report. So my point is these are the type of people that's out in the forefront that saying like they have um, labeled themselves or other people have labeled them who don't know, who don't have the information. They are the credit experts. They, they are the ones that's deemed the credit experts, and they're not nowhere close to it. Somebody will look at me and not think that because, you know, I got tattoos and, you know, I'm me. I am. I'm, 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 I'm Charles. You know that I'm, <laughs> you, you talk to me, you met me. I'm, yeah. It ain't nothing, it ain't nothing extra about me. Like, yeah, you're going to yeah. get, you know, I'm, it's nothing extra. So mm -hmm. with all that being say, said, it boils down to the information. A lot of people look at the, like, pastors, not to get on them, like, they have such profound knowledge about the Bible, and 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 you know I would always hear my grandmother say, "Well, Pastor said, man, if you got in 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 the good book or dissected things yourself, or really got in tune with who you are and the power that you have, then the things, those simple things that Pastor is saying to you, wouldn't be so profound. You know, it's like I think." I think I'm. I think that I'm smart, and I think that I analyze things, you know. But sometimes my wife, who is just a housewife, she could say some things that that I would never thought of. But they so simple, I'd be like, "Damn, like, wow," <laughs> you know. So my point is like information, like, like read and connect the dots, you know. Even take my book. I, I read every any book that somebody puts out on credit, I'm reading it because I want to know if they know something that I don't know. And if they do know something that I don't know, I'm man enough to humble myself, put myself under them, or try to talk to them so that I can get that information. Even if I got to steal the information, if I got to play, you know, I'll do that. And I just, you know, this this my advice to any of you guys. Like, man, learn. You can learn this. This stuff is not rocket science. And some of you got to just do and make your mistakes and keep it moving. 
like I said before, don't let your mistakes last forever, but just keep it moving. And I promise you, I mean, excuse my language, Charles, but <laughs> this shit works. It works. <laughs> don't let nobody tell you nothing. It works. <laughs> you just got to stay persistent. You got to... You got to just ask yourself the question, do I want to stay in this situation? Like, that is no fun. There's no fun having to go to work and they give you just enough to make it to the next paycheck. It's no fun being like, man, I got to schedule my vacation a month from now. And you don't, people don't have to be that way. They don't. They don't. We all have... I know, Go ahead, yeah, because I'm. I, know, I, I just know it's divine, it's divine an appointment, man. That uh, you and I connected, and now my circle, my family, my friends, and loved ones are be- becoming the beneficiary of our relationship just through hearing what you're sharing. And uh, I can't wait, man. I know you're in LA now, man. And you know how many times I'm calling you. But, right, man, right. You got, to, you got to get your balls up here, man. We got. To oh yeah, that. man. I'm, I'm, I'm. I'll, I'll be up there. I'm, I'm. I, you, trust me. You on my schedule, like. I know, I, I know. I'll be. I'll be up that way. I can't and, wait. You know, it's it's like a child, man, who's looking at uh, Christmas, man, three weeks in advance. He's counting <laughs> the days now. Like I see that bicycle under the uh, under the tree. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I mean, I, I can't wait. I um, uh, I gotta get. I always say I gotta get out because I gotta go I back know. in here and pay for these people that's with me bill and yeah. um, and I gotta I, I you know I'm in L A so I'm you trying know, to make yeah, use I, of yeah, every I, minute. Yeah, I know you, you try to get charged up. I understand. Right. But I, so. and I know Corey, this isn't gonna be the last time. I know there's some questions that didn't get addressed uh, tonight, and we will get them addressed. Um, right. But I just. Folks, I just want I just want to say this in closing while Corey's with us. Um, the the benefits of you uh, getting the information, reading it for yourself, getting the book <coughs> reading it for yourself, uh, taking a stand and, and just moving forward is going to be tremendous for you and your family. Um, the upcoming uh, seminar for those that are going to be in the immediate area when we uh, come up set our date here in Northern California, but we'll also be able to plug in uh, via webinar of that live seminar as well. Um, I'm just doing a little commercial plug here. That we're going to get that uh, those dates uh, hammered out and nailed down and make sure that we get them all out to everybody uh, just so that you all get a chance to see, uh, get your questions answered, and start working on your personal scenarios. Um, the turbo line or the uh, fast track to getting, you know, your scores boost up, you know, getting those um, uh, those credit lines to start your, you know, to, to accomplish your goals, that's available. We'll talk about that. We'll get all that hammered out again. This is just all um, very new. Corey and I just, we started talking, and I just started thinking about all of you guys, and that's why you're on the phone tonight. Um, so I'm not going to delay and start rambling because I start coming up with some more questions. I'm getting a couple of text messages right now. So go ahead and take care of your guests, man. I appreciate the, I know the rest of them appreciate you taking time out. We'll okay. talk later okay. on and we'll get scheduled up so when you get up get up here to Northern Cal. Okay. All right. You guys take All right. it easy. All right. All right. All right, Corey. Thanks. And for those of you still on the line, let me go ahead and give out the um, – Record number. Uh oh. Let me uh let me get the record let me get the record number. Does somebody have a re- ouch, the record number um handy? I, I, I just drew a blank on it. Bear with me one second. Okay, the recording number, the playback number is area code six four one Seven one five three four one three. The access code is the code you use to dial in five zero five zero five eight pound. 
And if you hit pound again per the instructions, I believe they'll play the most recent recording, which would be this one. Uh, not until I get the report when we complete this call will I be able to tell you the actual number. I believe it's going to be number five because the last call we did, uh, the same number I just gave out, you can listen to the playback on that. It may ask you for uh, what the number is, and the last call is number four. So I'm assuming that this call is going to be number five, but I will, once I get that number, I will text it to you because some of you may want to listen to the old call and some may want to listen to this call. Last call is number, last What's number that number five. again? The number again is six. One three four one three is the last four numbers. Six four one seven one five thirty four thirteen, and it's the same access code five zero five zero five eight pound, and the instructions will tell you to, to listen to the most recent call. Just hit pound, but the last week's call was uh, number four. Is that that's the uh, conference number or the recorded number. So um, that will conclude for now. Any other questions or statements anybody want to make um, before we conclude? No. Bye. Bye, Felicia. <laughs> you funny. You funny. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, yeah, funny. Not even thank you. Okay, it's like that then. No, it's been great. Thank you for the call. Awesome information. Wonderful. You all have a good evening. Stay tuned to uh, more information. And uh, if you haven't got the book, go out and get it. Uh, go to um, just a, one, one side note on regards to the book because for me personally, I like the audio version because I can work out, drive, walk, whatever, and listen to it. Before you hit the conclude button or, or the submit button on your order, pay attention to some of the, just Google the book and then look at some of the options or, or offers through either audiobook, Kindle, uh, Amazon, etc. because they'll have the book at one cost and for an additional cost you can get the audio version. And I was able to pick up the PDF, the Kindle version, and the audio version, I picked it all up, all of those, for $13. They were a la carte, but uh, by purchasing the Kindle book, I was able to get the uh, audio version for an additional 2 bucks. So you'll see some that might say $15, bucks. you might hear some that say another price, but uh, just pay attention. Um, just pay attention to the um, offers, and you should be able to get the book. Okay. So there's a downloadable version. Yes, and okay. uh, the downloadable ver downloadable version uh, I picked up at, at I believe it was Scribd or Scribd, and then I got the Kindle version through through Kindle. It's Kindle's uh, site as well. Okay. All right. Well, again, thanks everybody for. Uh, we're tuning in tonight, taking an hour and a half out of your your life tonight. Appreciate you all. Uh, much success to you, and stay tuned. Keep your eyes open to uh, to the communication for future events. All right, peace and love, family. We'll talk later. Okay. Good night. Good night. Good night.